think I'm going to leave it at poop. Any Giant poop.
If I can get the fan. She gets there in a minute, Hi, little schmuffin. Should we do your eye drops? Your serum first. Then we'll wait. And then we will do your ointment. Oh, I know in here. You're very beautiful. Good girl. Good girl. You are such a good girl. Tilt, tilt up for me. Thank you. Perfect. Good girl. Make sure that gets in everything. Good girl. You are so brave. So brave. Mm-hmm. Aren't you just so brave? So, 10.48, so 
Yes, and your belly is very big too. In a very good way. Do you want some? This is a very special treat. This is a very special treat you might like. And you might not like. But put it here like this. You can think about it. You can think about that cover your head. Like this would be very safe. I mean, it's no temptations. This is a lysine treat. That she may not be into like that, but... I try to give her some something nutritious in between the temptations. She did eat her entire can of food and some kibble too. She's a very, very smart, a very clever girl. Now it's half temptation, half wasting. She's probably full. Give you some snuggles. Snuggles are fun. It's all right. It's gonna be okay. Arranged. Oops. Oh, don't put your eyeball on there. Mmm. It's pretty beefy. You're a good girl, aren't you? Are you gonna come around for me? nice that you at least tolerate once I get you. You at least tolerate it. She's not excited about being captured. And she fits perfectly behind the Lego wall because the window, it's a, it's like a bay window. And the middle window is not, it's like four inches too narrow because the Legos go in six inch increments so you can't like fit it up tight against the window so there's just enough space for her to squeeze back there I thought she would want to go up high so she could look out the window because the bottom windows are frosted and the top windows she can look out of she hasn't quite gotten brave enough yet. I bet she will in the next couple of days, but nothing to see out there now anyway, probably. Maybe. Maybe some stuff. Right? It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's true. Her whole vision probably is frosted. 
her, the scarring in her right eye is right over her pupil. Obstructs probably half of her pupil. So she'll have some peripheral vision in that eye. But, um... Still, the placement of the scarring is unfortunate because it, it does obstruct quite a bit of her vision. Even though it's not nearly as it doesn't look nearly as bad as the left eye. The left eye, there's no way. She may see light and dark. She may see shadows moving, but... She, she's not... I get, you can tell, too, because like when she tried to even jump up on the counter, which she should be able to do, no problem, even gigantically pregnant. Um... She, you could tell she couldn't like judge judge where to jump, and it's a good thing that you came in where it's safe, cause something could have got you real easy. Could have snuck right up on you, no one would know. Mm. So it's good that you came here with me. It's raining outside too; you'd be all wet. Well, she probably had had a shelter place all worked out, but. Still, this is a lot easier. Oh, uh, I just got your serum on my hand. Hand serum. How are your ears doing? You've got some fairly magnificent tufting going on there. Yeah, they look pretty good. So all, all of the cats that we've brought in, all the mom cats have, they carry these upper respiratory viruses and they do pass them along to their kittens. That's why I started vaccinating this bunch um, in hopes of lessening the severity of the upper respiratory symptoms because all the kittens that have been born to the moms that have come in have had pretty wicked upper respiratory infections. So hoping that at least with this round, they're not as severe because they will all be exposed Sables, Neelixes, Savinas, hers, they all, they all, they all come here with it, so. Whether they're symptomatic or not, they all have it. But, um, this eye, this eye situation, uh, if, if one of the kittens has, develops, um, ulcers, they, if, as long as they have an, an owner that is responsible and caring for them, which these kittens all will have, um, it won't be an issue because it can just be treated. If you catch them in a reasonable time frame and treat them responsibly, then they're fine. However, we're hoping to avoid that with the vaccine, so we'll see. And we may actually vaccinate the kittens at like starting at four weeks instead of starting at eight weeks just to boost their immunity as much as possible. So we'll see how they do. She's definitely, uh, she's definitely feral. Um, this is a pretty typical feral cat reaction to kind of shut down, hide, and wait for the threat to leave. Um, if she ever knew the love of a human, um, I, it's it's. I mean, I suppose it is possible, but um, to me, since she's had these ulcer problems since she was little, probably her whole life, she's had them. Um, I don't think that she ever was owned by anyone responsible because they would have treated treated her and not let her run around pregnant with 
you know, and blind. And this isn't the first time she's been pregnant either, so... Um, it's not like this is a recent condition. She's been dealing with this her whole life. But I am super lucky that she's, um, that she deals with her fearfulness the way she's dealing with it. Because Savina would have been a huge challenge. Um, Sable is very confident. I'm not sure. Uh, she may have shown a bit of aggression if I had to handle her this many times a day. Debridement. Sometimes in dogs, they will try to remove the damaged corneal tissue. Uh, I don't know that it's as successful in cats as it is in dogs. Um, we're not to that point yet. We are trying. We're trying the eye ointment and the serum, and uh, we may try antiviral drops just if um, if. Uh, Dr. Ferguson can find out if they're reasonably safe um, and good nutrition, extra lysine supplements, all that stuff should help. So we're at least going to give it a shot for as long as we can and then see what happens. See what happens. She'll definitely be left with, she has so much scarring in there that um, on both sides that um, there's no way we're going to be able to get rid of all the scarring, but we're hoping at least in her right eye that we'll be able to reduce it enough so that she can have improved vision on that side and um, then we'll just have to see how the we'll see how the left responds and if it if it um, becomes clear that it's not responding to treatment and that it's not useful or if it's causing her a great deal of pain um, then we would remove it when she is spayed and when her hernia gets fixed. There will be a lot of surgery but you'll get lots of good drugs. Um, we do have specialist vet clinics up here. I have not worked with um, uh, an ophthalmologist specialist. However, if you remember back to the Kittens of Oz, Dr. Henderson took Manchita and Marvi to see the specialist. Um, so, and she knew exactly what was going on with them. So, um, we do have access to specialists should we need. Should we need them? But I know that Dr. Ferguson is consulting with specialists already, so they're pretty good about that because these feral cats always have things that normal vets don't see, and so they're always having to <laughs> figure out what kind of weird problem we're having, and then um, they always consult with specialists to figure out the best way to treat it.
Yes, I will be doing another t-shirt order. Um, we still have a few left, but um, if, and it, as soon as I just need, uh, I just need some time to figure out what we need to order. So it may be a few more days because it's been a little crazy. And it's going to continue to be a little crazy, to be honest. And probably, and then once three new litters of feral kittens are here, and whatever, you know, problems ha happen after that, it, I've definitely um, taken on way too much once again. And um, so I don't know how much other stuff is going to get done for the next foreseeable future between Cassidy and four feral moms, one of whom is injured and requires meds multiple times a day. And that's without, that's without having to bottle feed kittens and do like kitten meds and stuff like that, socialization and all that stuff. It's intense. It's going to be intense over here. And then it's going to be adoption time, which I hate because it's, I always have extreme anxiety about finding the best possible homes. And it's also very time consuming on top of all the other stuff. So it's gonna be busy. It's gonna be busy many months, many, many months, seven days a week, all day long. <laughs> but they're worth it. They're worth it. How could you say no to that little face, huh? There is no time for day job. This is my day job. This is my day job and my night job and my weekend job and my overnight job. <laughs> there are 11 cats plus three unborn litters right now being cared for here. The snugglers are helping with no elf though, which is awesome. And Noelf gets to go home on the 30th, which is super awesome. So then we'll be down to nine. And then we'll ha hopefully we won't have more than 12 babies. That would be really awesome if we only had 12 babies. Oh, total. I ran out of... I ran out of, um, I don't know, it's oh, it's well over a hundred and something. Because I think it was like 29 the first year, and then it was like 40 the second year, and then it was like 60 some the third year, so. And then we've already, like January was record breaking. Because I think we already had 16 just in January this year. Which is crazy. Yes, Tiny Kittens is a non-profit society. We have been for, actually, this is our one year anniversary of incorporating as a non-profit. We've been our own organization, not just, not just one random crazy cat lady doing stuff. Legit. We're legit now. <laughs> yep. There's only so much you can do as a volunteer for another organization. Especially when you're me and you have like crazy ideas and want to try new stuff all the time. And push the boundaries. 
Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Where is your little face? Is it time? Is it time? Is it time for your ointments? We cannot give tax receipts yet. Um, it's a really long, arduous process with the um, Canadian Revenue Agency. And um, as with any government bureaucracy, they have trouble, they have trouble like fitting me neatly into a box and they have trouble fitting tiny kittens neatly into a box because we're not a shelter per se. Well, we're not a shelter. It's, it's more about like testing assumptions and, and taking risks, not with the animals, but just with ourselves so that we can try to pave the way and, and just learn more and help other organizations that aren't able to take those risks and to raise awareness because of you guys and our huge awesome community. I think a cat like Sky can have a much greater impact. And if I was doing a shelter and taking in like you know, even if I was taking in like 40 cats at a time, I still think that bringing in one cat like Sky has a much greater impact than if I had 40 cats and wasn't able to do the live streaming and the Facebook and raising awareness and all that stuff along with it. Because lots of people write me that they are trying, they're starting TNR and they're like, they're going to try to foster a pregnant feral and so I think there's I think since no one else is really doing that that there's a lot of value in it and I think that we can provide more value doing stuff like that than we can just being a traditional shelter but um that's hard for the that's hard for the government to understand and be able to fit in into a box to check off their checklist You guys get it, <laughs> but the uh, Canadian Revenue Agency um, doesn't yet. But that's okay. <laughs> yes, we're a home for unwed cats. <laughs> um, Sky. So we have uh, two cats, Rollins and Rhodes, who are doing really well with one eyeball. They had one eyeball removed each so they each have one eyeball eyeball uh same situation as sky um and they're doing great so i think if she if she hated living indoors and um, had no hope of being socialized then going back to the forest with one eye would be perfectly fine um obviously ideally i would love to be able to put her in a home and then it's not as then it's not you know, it doesn't matter as much um, if, you know, she can live perfectly happy, happily with no, you know, blind in both eyes. Lots of blind cats do great. They adapt, and as long as they're in the right home, they do great. So um, that would obviously be my first choice. I am hopeful that we'll save at least her right eye. But um, it does seem like she has some potential, um, although it's, it's really, it is impossible to predict in the first week. Um, I think we've all seen hopeful signs, but as she gets more confident, she may get more aggressive, she may get less inclined to interact, um, 
the initial stress of being here has a profound impact on their personality and so like like we saw with well like I'm seeing with fairy as fairy feels better and is healing she's much more um, she's becoming more and more uh, aggressive and confident in expressing that she doesn't want me to interact with her and I can't really blame her because you know having to clean her wounds and stuff like that is not like super pleasant but we did have some we did have some positive interactions at the beginning so I was kind of you know hoping that maybe she would decide she liked it but um yeah so you never know I don't think you can I don't think you can predict anything with these guys you just have to wait and see how it goes but no matter, I'm not going to release her blind, obviously, so, um, and then it will also depend on if we can find an amazing adopter who is willing to work with her and, and understands her needs, and if, if she will be, it, as long as she won't be suffering being inside, which, you know, as of the first four days, which are not necessarily indicative of the next four days, uh, she seems to be doing pretty well. She hasn't been panicky. She's been stressed. Um, you can tell that she's definitely stressed and she's fearful of me when I come in the room. And um, But I think that we have had some positive interaction. She does like to be petted under her chin like this. So... Um, I think some of the cats in the area are dumped, um, but the vast majority are born there. You're very cute. Very cute. What do you think? Are you ready to be put back? Your little nose is runny and sweaty again. I brought you some food. Do you want to try this one more thing? If I put it here. What if I put it right there by your face? You try, oops, and then I make a noise. You don't even want to try it if I make a noise, right? Oh, that's nice. Your little possum nose. Um, we're not going to North Carolina anytime soon, so I assume when you say littered, you mean that they've, when they've had their babies, um, they will all have had their babies before I would go. It will be super complicated though, because I'll have to be there a couple weeks, I'm assuming. So, um, I'll probably have to hire some people to come in and do shifts and be on call all night long and stuff, all the stuff that I do. Um, we'll have to have someone basically watching 24 hours a day. It will be interesting, but we'll deal with that when, when it's closer to the time. She likes this part. You're so cute. She's 
She was really digging that. Oh, look at that. Oh, she likes it. See, that's a good sign, what she's doing right now. She's giving me access to her neck so that she can get the scratches like she wants them. I just accidentally pushed her treat down there, though. Mm. I think it will be primarily Gwen because she has the medical qualifications um, and would know what to do in case of an emergency. It's not something that just a that that a new volunteer could um, would be able to do, unfortunately. Harry's tail is doing great, yes. Hmm. You're into it, huh? That's good. Oh, she likes it. Never mind. Yes, that's true. Feral qualifications are important, too. Oh, you're so cute. Um, I don't know where the whole blade thing came from, actually. Because that's something that I would love for him to have, but we aren't, we aren't to that point in the process yet, so... I think that was, um, perhaps slightly taken out of context when Dr. Higgins mentioned it. But I do want, I would love for him to have blades, for sure. Fairy's tail ending. Very good, Alan. <laughs> yeah, makes for a good story. Casserole's doing well. Uh, they, they think we need to wait two to four weeks to see what kind of effect it will really have. So we're carrying on and hoping for the best. She actually is enjoying this. She's leaning forward into my hand and pretty relaxed.
What did I take on me? What did I take on me? How about this one? This is cool. Oh, she forgot about the human predator who was doing all that to her. You were there to meet with. I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking at you. Uh -uh. No. No, again, definitely not. No. He's so cute. Oh my goodness, he's so cute.
Here you go, brave. I'm going to go back in your little nest. Like I brought you. Some. Oh, maybe we should feed you. Are you hungry? I brought that for you. He's sort of interested, but sort of not interested. All right, then. All right, then. I will wish up your lacing treat in there. So you get your full dose. You got your eye drops. You got your eye ointment. Got you all drugged up. You were very brave. Once again, what a brave girl. She's so brave. I'm very proud of you. I think you can't afford to put your lacing tree in there. Now, Oh, 
Mm -hmm. That makes me do this. But I was so comfy. You're so comfy in there too. You're so comfy. You're so comfy. You're very comfy. And then we got your little friend right here. Your little mouse friend. Whoops. And your little feather friend. Little feathers. And then you've got your snacks right here. You want me to put them up here? Put your snacks right there. And then you're basically good to go. And we've got kibbles. We've got our water. We're good. All right. Good job, everybody. Good job. Now, what are we going to do with this area? I guess that's just how I can. Decide what to do with it. Okay. Get your night light on and stuff. There we go. There. Okay. All right. You have a good night. Good night, everybody.